Good evening. Um, as you will have maybe noticed, uh, Brazil is represented here in the Internet Hall of Fame by three typical Brazilians. Uh, there's Tadao Takahashi, there's Demi Gechko, and there's myself. And we all came together in the 1980s to be able to help to construct the first internet network in Brazil. Um, this had a series of, of, act, of uh, aspects. Um, I only met the two of them during this process. And uh, it was an interesting one because it was conducted partly within the scientific community. I was a university professor, I have been from when I went to Brazil in 1971 until I, my retirement five years ago. And during this time, in the 80s, I was working as the head of department of computer science at the Catholic University in Rio de Janeiro. And uh, I, my first activity uh, connected with networks was just using, um, how shall I put it, uh, local area networks. And then, um, I've always been interested in communications and also a bit in geography. Um, I read about the NSFnet. You know? The NSFnet was, uh, was started, engineered in 1985, and the news of this arrived in Brazil a little bit later because uh, at the time we had no good electronic communications, we had to wait for the journals to arrive by surface mail and all this, that kind of stuff. But I was so impressed by what I read about what was going on in this that uh, I, I really decided that this was what we needed in order to be able to communicate adequately in the academic community. And so, um, I used the contacts I had in different areas to try to provoke a discussion about such a goal. And uh, there were two meetings which uh, I helped to organize in that year, 1987. Uh, one was just of people in the computing and networking area. And this also included, uh, called people from our NSFs called CNP, CNPQ, who asked me to organize a larger meeting at the University of Sao Paulo some months later, uh, to which about 40, 45 people came. And these people represented people, a part of the government, many of the research groups in different disciplines, and also the, uh, the state telephone monopoly, which uh, was, it was to prove uh, one of the obstacles in the path of being able to do what we wanted to do. But we went ahead and, and def decide, defined at this meeting what were the obstacles and how we'd like to, to overcome them. And the result of this was that two years later, the Brazilian government launched a, a project called RNP, that's the National Research Network in Portuguese, uh, and Tadao Takahashi was appointed as the coordinator of this project. And uh, shortly afterwards, uh, he invited Demi and myself to join him, and together we uh, worked in collaboration in order to deliver um, what was uh, proposed at that meeting two years earlier. It took us three years, and uh, they were very, very interesting years. Uh, we had interaction, for instance, with people in Latin America during this time. Uh, there was uh, a, an international meeting held in Rio de Janeiro, which I helped organize, but I didn't take much part in as far as the, the international connections were concerned. But we ended up in 1992 with uh, a national backbone network which touched 11 of the 27 constituent parts of Brazil uh, at the vast speed of 64 kilobits a second or nine 0.6 kilobits a second. Um, it's funny. Um, this was, I suppose you could see, uh, in retrospect, the digital divide between uh, our part of the world and the North, North, and, uh, North America. You know, we had the, this, this vast difference between the speeds which were then operating on the NSF net and, and our own. 
However, that was a challenge. Um, our MP uh, was established, uh, as I say, in 1992 as a network. Um, the following year, I moved on to back to the university because I, I, uh, the option for me to continue with RMP was to stop being a professor and start being a, a um, how say, living off a, off a grant. And that wasn't really feasible with the number of children I had at that time. <laughs> so I just started reverting to, to what was going on, the problems within the universities, and I had a very happy few years uh, interacting there with the new university I went to. I was at the Catholic University in 87, and then I moved to the UFI, the uh, federal university in, in Niteroi, next to Rio. And uh, that, that was how I spent the next eight years. In 1999, the RMP, ah, sorry, I missed out. In 1995, and this is important, uh, the commercial internet came to Brazil. Uh, the, after two years of then RMP working and reading about what you could do on the internet, uh, there was a, a vast clamor for uh, commercial services. And uh, in fact, RMP was enrolled in this process of helping to set up the commercial internet. Uh, at the same time, we had a new government in that year, 2000, 1995, sorry, uh, whose job uh, included, whose objects in, objectives included to to break up the telecom monopoly, which was an essential part of, of uh, removing obstacles to, to bringing investment into this kind of activity. And so that was uh, a, a very tumultuous period, which, I, as I say, I, I missed out on quite a lot. However, RMP's involvement was significant because their backbone, which by then was something like two meg uh, connections, uh, was widely used as an alternative to the state monopolies network and provide options for, thus for, for providers to be able to, to take their traffic to the, the exchange points which were starting to appear. Um, Tadao had left by 1996 and his successor was José Luis Ribeiro. José Luis uh, was working before that at a university in Rio also, and uh, he was alarmed at the idea that, that there was a lot of discussion at that time of abandoning altogether the support by the government of a national uh, research and education network. And he uh, advanced a, a, a new proposal, which was to convert the RMP project into uh, a, a, a private, sorry, not a private, a, a non-profit company which would then be uh, contracted by the government on a regular basis as a part of the uh, national um, budget uh, to operate and run the, the network. And this was, was done about 1999, 90, uh, 2000. And uh, this was set the stage for what was going to happen after that. What happened after that was that José Luis decided he wanted to be part of the commercial internet also, and so he left RMP and looked for another job. Uh, his successor was called Nelson Simoinge, who has been Director General at RMP now since 2001. And uh, he has, uh, I've, I, I was already known to him because the university I had been at in 1987, he was also there. And in 2002, he uh, invited me to rejoin RMP as a member of the Board of Directors and uh, then to work together to solve the problems or to advance the stage, the state of, of uh, research and education networking in order to make it uh, something which we could e uh, best sell to the government as, as a fixture for supporting the, uh, the, the part of the, of the organ of, uh, to research, education, um, and similarly related parts of, the, of, of our society which really needed networks. So, uh, in this period, starting 2002, uh, we, RMP 
uh, I moved in a number of areas for the next few years, uh, developing the network more, uh, producing collaboration within the uh, community of um, the universities to develop uh, network services for uh, use by our users, and also to start introducing uh, connections, in, international connections, with other uh, networks of a similar kind. And these were uh, obviously the United States, but also in other countries of Latin America and uh, in Europe. So a number of, uh, of long-term collaborations began with, with these other continents, and this uh, helped to uh, bring us closer to where we ought to be in terms of providing adequate services for, for uh, our users. RMP was launched in September uh, 1989, exactly 30 years ago this month. So we uh, were now uh, at the stage of uh, looking back and uh, seeing how, how we are at present. Um, Brazil is a very large country, as you probably know. Um, we have now clients, campus, in 1,500 points in institutions around the country. And uh, we, uh, we kind of calculate about 4 million, which is about 2% of the population, uh, is served by, by these connections, either as people who work in the universities or their students and so on. Um, the latest news we have about uh, attacking the digital divide is we have a series of, uh, of new initiatives in course. Uh, many of these are to do with network development, and one of the people most involved in uh, handling this is our present uh, director of, uh, of networks, who's Eduardo Grisenji. And these include uh, now, this is several years later after the, after the first network, uh, upgrading our backbone to 100 gig, uh, and possibly it's scale, I say it's scalable, I use the word scalable because it's multiples of 100 gig, it depends on the demand of traffic you have. Um, there's international uh, connections which are also at the same level, 100 gig, scalable. Uh, Red Clara, I didn't mention Red Clara, but Red Clara was set up around 2003 to uh, bring together the, the similar networks in Latin America from Mexico down to, to the south of, the, of South America. Uh, there are about 14 national networks involved in Red Clara and this has been, uh, our project of building this and operating this network has been uh, the uh, the object of much assistance from the European Union through successive uh, projects. And uh, so we are now uh, uh, increasing the capacity of, of the Red Clara network also to 100 gig um, scalable. And there are new international routes. So new, there, are, there are links to the US. There, there's a new route to Africa. Uh, a new cable, trans-South Trans Atlantic cable for a change, uh, is enabling us to, to, to get directly from Brazil and thus the rest of Lat South, uh, Latin America to, to Africa. And for the first time in many, many years, uh, a new submarine cable is under construction at the moment between Brazil and Portugal, which will provide uh, very high capacity, scalable access to, to Europe. So all of these things are going on at the moment. Um, RMP is now 30 years from, from its uh, point zero. Uh, what it will be like in, in another 30 years' time, it's very difficult for me to predict. I probably won't be around to see it. Uh, but time will tell, and I, I think the, the signs are good. I'd like to uh, close by thanking some of the people who who have been involved in, in, this, in my uh, proposal to be a member here. Uh, the proponent was Peter Knight, who is uh, a United States citizen who lives and works in Brazil. Uh, he's an economist uh, and is a stand-up paddler. At 76, he's in very good condition. 
Um, then there are my sponsors, the people who provided uh, uh, support letters. There are five of them altogether. One is Professor Harvey Newman from Caltech uh, because of uh, our great collaboration in assisting the physics researchers uh, who are in, scattered in, around Brazil. Uh, also Nelson Simoins, the Director General, and Flavio Wagner, who is currently the, the head of um, the Internet uh, Society in Brazil. And two of, my, uh, uh, two of my former students, Yara Machado, who is now a director of RMP in my place, and Dan Antonio Abelain uh, from the university in Pará. Uh, I'll close by thanking very much the Internet Society for, for uh, recognizing uh, and approving and uh, giving me this opportunity. I'm very, very pleased and very proud and rather humbled to be to get to this stage and I'd like to thank them very much and finally my, my family uh, I have my daughter here with me she's sat at the table here at the front uh, we there are my wife's Virgilia and uh, we have two sons also Anthony and uh, Leonardo and they, they they follow and support me very much in in all that I do in this respect and I, I'd like to thank all of them thank you <laughs>